hey vikings fans welcome into another episode of the skull hop i'm evan and i'm austin we're just a couple of dudes from iowa who like drinking beer we like talking about the vikings we do skull skull so uh evan you brought the beer tonight i what, sure uh, did what would you bring us i brought us the fire trucker brewery out of ankeny iowa their iowa ipa american ipa mm-hmm. i like the iowa ipa moniker better I think so the name of it fitting. is iowa ipa but it looks like their the style is yes. american quote-unquote american ipa correct uh, but we'll just call it the iowa ipa because we only drink iowa beers on this show on the show yeah and uh yeah i think it's a a good name for a beer six percent it's an ipa and it's just solid yeah yeah i i like it a lot we uh we did our tiktok yeah which you hopefully have already seen um i felt like i was kind of awkward on it i don't know i saw my my beardless face on the <laughs> screen and kind of froze up but we did our tiktok and we did our first taste and we both we both said we liked it right yeah i liked yeah. it a lot i uh, like it the foam for mine is finally dying down a few minutes <laughs> later i did a hard pour i don't know somebody needs to teach me how to pour we'll uh, work on if that. you have tutorials on how to pour a beer send them our way uh schoolhop at gmail.com that's that's fine because uh, i obviously need some help but yeah I like the beer. I like it a lot. It's good. And uh, I'll have a more well thought out opinion at the end of the episode. Agreed. Yeah. But so far, so good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, today's episode is brought to you by Big Top Ventures. Um, to get the best rates on all inclusive resorts in Mexico and Jamaica, go ahead and send an email to Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. That's Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. And uh, let them know you're interested in all inclusives in Mexico or Jamaica. And they will just send you any information you want. It's uh, They got some really good rates over there. Yeah. Thanks, Big Top, for yeah. the sponsorship. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, the, uh, the Viking season officially ended. It did. This last weekend. Almost like put us out of our misery a little bit. Kind of. I mean,. We all knew that the Vikings weren't going to go anywhere or do anything in the playoffs. I mean, I was I was holding out hope. I, I knew if they made it, they probably wouldn't do anything. I had made that statement many, many, many weeks ago, like in the first quarter of the season, saying like, holy cow, with these one in four Vikings, if they end up making the playoffs. Could be a dangerous team. Look out. Because, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll, they will have fought and clawed their way into the playoffs, and they'll be, they'll be scary. But you could just see it even in the faces of – the coaches and the players on the sidelines the last several weeks not Mm -hmm. just this week 18 game but you could just see the deflated uh uninspired play yeah that they came out with it kind of looked like what it felt like on the last day of school you know what i mean like (laughs) even even if you liked that year of school and you you made some new friends you had a good time like that last day of school and like middle school you know it's always like oh summer and i'm ready for the next thing it kind of felt like that like maybe some of the players were thinking like oh hawaii or mexico or jamaica through big top ventures um <laughs> like it kind of felt like they were they knew it and they were just ready to do what they needed to do turn in their books turn in their pads and and go home for the summer mm. um which I don't know, kind of feels merciful after how this season <laughs> beat the crap out of the Vikings and Vikings fans. Um, it would have been fun. I always, I've said it a million times. I root for my team to win. I wanted the playoffs and to even at kickoff, knowing like there's a reality where this isn't the last game of the season. However small that chance is, like that was still kind of exciting to me. But yeah. Well, we were texting back and forth, like we always do if we're not watching the game in mm-hmm. person together. And the game clearly was not within the Vikings' reach, Mm-mm. even from the get-go. I mean, you texted me after the first touchdown, and you were like, or the first Lions touchdown. <laughs> well, uh, that's it. And I was actually at my parents' house. I don't think <laughs> I told you that, but I was helping my dad with the project. And I told my dad, I'm like, just give me a minute. And I watched the first touch. I'm like, all right, now I can help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we'll keep it on in the background. But anyways, we were texting later on in the game. We were kind of frustrated because 
all of the starters, including guys like JJ, were still in. Yeah. And at that point, not only was that game out of reach, but uh, who was it? Was it the Saints? No. The Bucks. One of those two oh, yeah. who had won. Need? The Panthers needed to win, or I think the the Falcons needed to win. And then, yeah, the Buccaneers, I think, needed to lose. There was a few scenarios, and one of those things... The Saints won. Yeah. And I'll, I won't forget it because there was that infamous <laughs> QB sneak at the end. Yeah, we can talk about that for a little bit. That's crazy. Yeah, that was that was kind of interesting. But anyways, the, the playoffs were completely off the table at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the key pieces to the puzzle of the Vikings getting into the playoffs had fallen through. It wasn't going to be possible. And yet, you know, JJ's still out there. And we're thinking, like, he could get hurt just like Sammy Laporta did. And Oh, my gosh. You know, he's our best player by far. J- yeah, JJ. Yeah. Can you imagine if he would have popped his Achilles in the fourth quarter of that game? Like, oh, my gosh. Kevin O'Connell might not have a job today <laughs> like, if that happened. Like people are, yeah, heads would have rolled. That would have been crazy. And thank goodness, I don't think any Vikings really got injured Um I know some Lions got Sam injured. Laporta was the most notable one, but I, I wrote down, too, here that a few others got dinged up, too, and Dan Campbell kind of got some flack for it. Yeah, never pulled anybody out. I think Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, was it? Is that is he the bear or the, the Lions? St. Brown for the Lions. Yeah, he's the Lions. Yeah, uh, he kind of got... best receiver. He kind of got pulled up and yep. was grabbing at his chest a little bit. He seemed to be okay. He's probably a little, little dinged up, a little hurt, but not... He played he'll, the rest of the game. He'll play this weekend. I saw a video where he and JJ uh, swapped jerseys after the game, and he looked he looked fine. Yeah, um, but yeah, but it, it's always a tough it's a tough call. You know, do you keep your guys in? Do you not? And we know Dan Campbell to be a coach who's an ultra competitor, and just mm-hmm. you know he's gonna fight till the end, no matter what. We saw that when he was zero and sixteen, and now <laughs> last year they missed the playoffs, but barely. Are you saying, like, was he a player when they were 0-16? No. He took over right after they were 0-16, didn't he? The Lions were 0-16 a while ago. No, maybe. They've been bad for a while, but. They've been bad for quite a while. Yeah. He may have been on the 0-16 Were they 1-15 his first season? I don't, I don't. They were bad. They were, they didn't win very many games his first season. And then last season, they kind of turned it around in the last half of the season. Mm -hmm. And I think they ended up winning like eight or nine games. Yeah. Well, so I've been doing a little bit of a re-listen to our, our podcast. I'm like through the first seven episodes i'm really conceited that way i like to hear my own voice um but we've been saying since the first episode that the lions. hey the lions were yeah. the the team to beat at the end of the 22 season um it's just the vikings had already set the the, the foundation for winning the division but yeah and there was no question they were the best team in the nfc north this season the 23 season so yeah i mean they're a good team now and campbell seems to be a good coach um but yeah, he like to your point. He's not one that'll give up. They could have been down four hundred points, and he's not going to give up, uh, for better or for worse. And now we get to see the uh, Stafford Goff rematch mm-hmm. in the wild card round of the playoffs, <laughs> which will be have interesting. They, have the Lions and Rams played each other at all since that trade? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Even like preseason, I don't know. I haven't even really paid attention. Yeah, but. It'll be in Detroit, so Matt Stafford has a a chance to win a playoff game at Ford Field, I believe, for the first time ever. <laughs> um, and not, I am I'm rooting for the I'm rooting for the Rams. Um, Lions fans have something to be happy about and root for this year, but at the end of the day, there's still an NFC North rival, and I'm not gonna root for an NFC North rival just because they're in the same division and oh, at least somebody could no, we're we are anti NFC North other teams. I am at least. So go Rams. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk about the playoffs in a little bit. Um, a few other just uh, quick hitting notes from the lost to the Lions this last week. Mullins didn't play terribly. No, uh, he still got his hit two picks. Though. Two picks. Yeah. But two touchdowns and four yards shy of 400 yards. Yeah, I mean, 30 of 44. Yeah, I mean, 
that's that's not a terrible game. The ball moves when he's under center. The ball gets turned over a lot when he's under center, but it also moves down the field a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I texted you, and I was kind of worried about my whole losing the turnover battle or committing a turnover. <laughs> my prediction where I said the Vikings go whole game without turning the ball over, they're going to win. That was in jeopardy because the Vikings were clearly going to lose, and they hadn't turned the ball over yet. And I hit send. And he threw and an literally, interception. Literally... It's like me hitting send caused the defender to catch the ball. Like it, yep. it, it was the next play after I hit send on that text to you, and uh, I don't know if you said it or if I said it right away. It was like, oh, never mind. I think we. It was like one of those things where we <laughs> both texted back at the same time. Yeah, you were like, "Welp, <laughs> bloop," and I was and, like, "Oh, never mind." Yep. <laughs> so, anyways, I didn't think he played terribly. He found ways to get JJ the ball. It took a while, like mm-hmm. it has taken a while the last couple of games with JJ back. A and, while, as in, like he had what eighty nine yards in the first half. Yeah, but like even in the first quarter, it was just frustrating. Like find Justin Jefferson. Yeah, he is your best player, and they just weren't getting him the ball. Mm-hmm. He JJ finished the game with one hundred and ninety two yards and a touchdown, yeah. and still eclipsed a thousand yards. Yeah, which is crazy for only playing what. I think he missed seven games. Yeah, he played 10 games and not even 10 full games because, like, his first game back after being on IR. Yep, he had to go to the ER. Yeah, he and that was in at least the first half, if not the first quarter, that yep. Dobbs hung him out to dry. Yep. Um, and I think that whole that whole thing, not to go off on too much of a tan- tangent, when they took him out and sent him to the ER, it was like, oh, he grabbed his side. If he hadn't gotten tackled that way and, like, grabbed his side when he hit the ground – he probably would have been in the next play or within the next couple of plays. They just rightfully so are so cautious with him, especially in a a season that doesn't matter. Why go balls out if you're not going to even make the playoffs? Well, yeah. And, and not to mention the fact that he's our best player and we want him back and we want to see him in purple, but all the armchair quarterbacks out there, the keyboard heroes are, uh, whipping up a storm about oh trade jj get the picks blah 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 let's just burn the whole thing down and there so it, whether or not we agree with that yeah it, it, it is true to some extent like yeah you want to protect your assets mm-hmm. and if if he is your greatest asset in terms of talent on the field then yeah take him to the er if he grabs his side sure pull him off the field if he comes up you know, tell him he can't do the fake hamstring oh pull gosh. dance in the end zone anymore. Like, <laughs> otherwise, he's going to get yanked. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, you got to protect your assets a little bit. You have to make sure that he's good to go because, A, we want him on the field and we want him to produce the way that he's produced all four years that he's played mm-hmm. in purple. Yeah. And a thousand if, yards every year. If push comes to shove and we have to let him go, then we want top dollar sure right we, we want you know the, the the picks or whatever we can get in return mm-hmm. for i'm gonna pull us on a tangent but please be our bumpers and pull us right back because oh. this is only gonna take a minute let's do it how freaking awesome is jj right like on the field absolutely there's no question the guy's elite he's on a hall of fame path If he continues what he's doing, he will be a Hall of Famer. But off the field, this guy, I haven't seen a negative word, thought. I mean, we've seen negative looks on his face during the Lions game, but that just seems like frustration. Like, come on, let's win. He's got a a very competitive energy Mm -hmm. on the field, and when things go wrong, you see that emotion bubble over, but I I attribute that to just being a competitor. Yeah, and I uh, I think some of that is rubbed off onto him from Adam Thielen, which kind of makes me like warm and fuzzy inside. Like, <laughs> oh, so you pick something up from Adam. Yeah. Um, but for real, JJ, this whole time, he could have been, he could have done the, the Stefan Diggs where he pulled the hoodie over his face and tied the zip ties and like, yeah, no, I hate this place. This is terrible. He could have done that. Yeah. He could have said, trade me, yeah. send me some, send me the Eagles, send me somewhere that I'm going to win and get the respect and get a Taylor ring, Swift maybe. and do, you know, get a <laughs> ring. He could have, he could have done that. He still easily could have. Uh, and we'll never know what happens behind the scenes. Maybe he's terrible, but we've never heard anything about that. That guy 
every time he gets a chance shows that he is a teammate he loves the vikings never once has he publicly said i want out or i want a different quarterback he's only ever been in kirk's court he's only ever defended his team and i mean sure what a week or two ago he he was very adamant about kirk being the quarterback almost to the point of making it sound like he was throwing shade on other guys but he never actually did that like he seems like such a guy to root for on this team and it's awesome because we've seen diva wide receivers and he's not one of those so far he he's everything as a a player on the field that randy moss was Mm -hmm. in terms of production yards touchdowns i mean maybe not exactly but i mean he's like give him a couple more years he's going to be up there in the upper echelon of wide receivers and he's everything off the field that you didn't want randy to be yeah yeah (laughs) you know so like yeah he's he's got that great reputation on and off the field Mm -hmm. i think to further this tangent because i think it's a great tangent to go on um i i think there are very few guys in that Vikings locker room right now that are that diva cancer, um, get them off of our team as soon as possible type of guys. The loud mouth, the guy that you don't want in front of the media, the guy that's just saying, I'm only here so I won't get fined. And it makes me wonder to go way down this rabbit hole. It makes me wonder. Some of these thoughts are just kind of materializing as we talk. Um, but it makes me wonder if like Marcus Davenport and Lewis seen are kind of that way. And that's why they've been shut down. And we just, it's been like Marcus who, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's, we, we live near Davenport. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, it, it's been like, like darkness for them. It's mm-hmm. been like, we, they haven't even been interviewed hardly. Yeah. Like it's just been like complete blackout nothing they're in street clothes on the sidelines i don't even think marcus davenport has been traveling with the team has marcus he? davenport could walk into this room right now wearing his jersey reach out his hand and say hello i'm marcus davenport and i would not recognize him i saw a video of him <laughs> i don't even know what he looks a while like. ago so i kind of know what he looks like but yeah, I, I, mean, I get it. I mean, he, he is an anonymous, anonymous face, and I think he only appeared in like four games. If that. I think really just two for the most part. And he had he had a big role in, I think it was the Carolina game. And that's it. The Vikings paid, I think, something like $13 million for the Carolina game. Yeah. And I think eventually we need to talk about the off season. We're still, I, I think we'll transition first to the recapping the season because mm-hmm. that's the most uh present thing mm-hmm. in the off season is a little bit farther off um but i think it'd be fun to cover both of those things in this episode if we can squeeze all that in um but yeah it, it's just been really interesting to to see that and i i guess that's a theory that i've maybe developed since we've been talking that because the culture of the team overall is so good and you hear so many good things perhaps they're trying to squash those cancerous type players yeah and i just, mean you're on to something i think i'd never really thought about it but maybe the pr department or whatever version of quote-unquote pr department the vikings have um maybe they're aware of it doesn't we don't even need to keep saying one player's name but like maybe there is a certain player that the media would talk to if they had the chance but the coaches or pr department or whoever it is know like no we're going to be on sports center if player x gets in front of microphones because he's a hothead or he, he's just going to spout out some negative stuff that doesn't even matter so we're just going to find creative ways to not let him get in front of the media i don't know that that could be could be a thing that's happening. And with the way this season went, with as frustrating as this season was, and maybe this is a good transition into recapping the season, with as frustrating as this season was, nobody really said anything that was like alarming or Mm -hmm. like, oh, they want to get off this team. Oh, wow, I can't believe they just said that. Like no bombs were dropped really by players. Um, 
and we've known Kirk Cousins to be a very well-spoken, um, carefully thought out yeah. um, communicator, mm-hmm. right? And I think, honestly, I think the reason JJ is that way is because of Kirk's influence. I Potentially, would say. yeah. Um, you know, uh, and and we've seen other players like some of them aren't the most articulate, <laughs> but they're football players. They don't have to be. Yeah, <laughs> but they're also not speaking out of their butts, saying stupid stuff that is embarrassing for the rest of the organization. And we, yeah. just, I, don't, I don't think we really have any of those moments. Maybe there were, and I'm just not aware of them. Yeah, but I nothing think we follow that, enough that we would know. Like, oh. Uh, it would be on Sports that. Center, like, oh, player X for the Vikings, man, what a loser. He really hates this team. Like, you know, we would hear something about that. Right. And to double down on that, through all of that, to throw out this hypothetical idea we just kind of formulated, we've still seen the likes of Harrison Smith, JJ, Kirk, as much as possible, big name Vikings are still being put out in front of the media, in front of people, um, and still not saying terrible things. So not only could it be possible that PR departments are kind of squashing guys and not letting negative guys get in front of people, the players they are letting in front of people are big name players. It's it's not like we're sitting here saying it's weird that we haven't heard JJ talk for weeks. Because we have. he's He's talked every opportunity he gets to, and he says great thing so even when he was hurt he was going out with kj osborne mm-hmm. and doing like uh shopping sprees with little kids and yeah. stuff like that like he was just doing cool stuff and being a great guy off the field yeah. and harrison smith to kind of piggyback on that a little bit like harrison smith doesn't sit in front of the camera and just you know shoot the breeze and he doesn't you know talk shun- sunshine and rainbows the whole time like mm-hmm. he'll sit there and kind of like wear his heart on his sleeve a little bit and even this last uh like locker room presser that he did after this loss to the lions mm-hmm. he's kind of like yeah i'm frustrated yeah well, didn't end the way we wanted it to and potentially his career yeah and i don't know what's next for me if I retire, he, I think he was quoted as saying like, if I retire, you won't know about yeah, it. I won't, I'm not going to tell you like, <laughs> which I, I mean, if you sat down and asked me right now to say what I think, will he retire or keep playing? I genuinely don't know. Like I really would be both surprised and not surprised by anything that he comes out and says, whether he's playing or not. I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it'll be interesting. I mean, I mean, there's there are a couple of huge bombs dropped in football world today. Oh just yeah, today like <laughs> Pete Carroll getting fired, and then uh, that that was less surprising. But Nick Saban retiring yeah, that was as crazy. Alabama coach. That was I texted was friend of the show Forrest when I saw that because Forrest is a diehard. Uh, Michigan fan so yeah, I, I was to Michigan by the way yeah as even though I'm an Iowa fan I was definitely in that game rooting for for my friend and rooting for his team so I was I was rooting for Michigan and I texted him I was like did you see Nick Saban's retiring he's like yeah it's crazy I just saw I was like I heard I heard Harbaugh's going to Alabama <laughs> totally just yanking his chain I haven't actually heard anything like that and I'm sure I'm not the first person to make that joke but uh, he just said, ha ha, like, <laughs> like he knows I was joking, but that's funny. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Saban, uh, Mike, v- Mike Vrabel. Was Vrabel? that today or was that yesterday? That was Either yesterday. Way. But, Crazy. Yeah. yeah. And who knows? We could, I mean, could have happened already on Twitter. Like Bill Belichick is not guaranteed to be a coach next season. Like at least not with the Patriots. Like that could happen at any moment mm-hmm. or not at all. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, we'll get to the off season and all of that because those things affect the Vikings with a former head coach mm-hmm. on the coaching staff right now. Those yeah. coaching vacancies could look somewhat attractive to Brian Flores for the yeah. right price and the right setup and and all that. But um, Vikings seven and ten overall. Yep, on the season losing record. Um. Two and six at home. That's crazy. Which stinks. Yeah. At that, yeah. U.S. Bank is such a nice place and something that I would would assume to be a great 
home field advantage to only win two games there like yeah that's that's demoralizing five and four on the road and they were just the vikings were streaky as all get out Mm -hmm. started one and four oh and three and then one and four Mm -hmm. um and then ended with that four game losing streak yeah i absolutely when they beat the raiders they squeaked it out. It wasn't a beat down. I mean, they won three, three to nothing. nothing. <laughs> um, when they beat the Raiders, that was their last win. And I definitely did not expect that to be their last win. I mean, I think they played the Bears after that game. They played the the entire NFC North after that game. Like, yeah, I you just don't expect. It, it was, I don't need to tell you guys. If you watched, if you're a Vikings fan and you watched the the team this year, it was a roller coaster ending with such a disappointment, and I was surprised. And obviously, in the preseason, you and I, we we made our predictions, and we're always going to be a little homerish. I don't know if I will ever go and predict the Vikings to win only two or three games in the season, um, but I said they'd go ten and seven, and I was wrong <laughs> about a handful of games. You were closer than I was. I said 12 and 5. But going off of 13 and 4, like, and all that to say, like, yeah, Kirk went down. And at the time he went down, he was on a trend. I think there was like a four-game streak where he was looking looking MVP-like. Yeah. But he still started. I mean, he was the starter for that 1 and 4 start. So, I mean, it still started a little rocky for the whole team, not just Kirk, but he was a part of that. And and we talked previously about how he played really well in those first handful of games yeah. where they lost, and then his worst game in the early part of the season was the first win yeah. at Carolina, mm-hmm. which is kind of odd. Yeah, and who's to say? I mean, yeah, we can, you know, put it on a pedestal and say what could have been and Kirk should have been MVP. You know, we can, we can say stuff like that, but who's to say he wouldn't have gotten cold or teams would have figured out, Oh, he can't do this. So we're just going to defend him this way and, you know, totally shut him down. Um, I don't know, but man, it sure seemed like he was figuring things out when JJ went down. Addison really started to take a step and then Addison kind of went cold once, once Kirk went down, just, a season that what could have been. Yeah. Oh, well, for sure. Something that I was surprised by as I reflected on the season. Um, so I'm pretty sure I was pretty vocal about this when Kirk first got injured, that he'd be very present and he would be very active um, on the sidelines, like visibly active, yeah. like coaching almost. Yeah, we and thought I, that would be the case. And I thought... You know, maybe there was an outside shot that he would hang up his cleats and grab a clipboard and retire at the end of the season and take up coaching. I thought for sure, man, like he's just such a good guy. The players Mm -hmm. rally around him. Maybe this is that transition for him and he becomes the next Kevin O'Connell and he gets a shot at coordinating somewhere and then he goes on to coach somewhere. I don't know. Maybe that's not what he wants, but like he was just like noticeably absent for a while on the sideline, wasn't traveling with the team. Mm -hmm. And then when he did come back, he just kind of stood there. Yeah. And (laughs) we've already talked about whatever version of the quote unquote PR department the Vikings have. Maybe they were a part of that and were telling him like, Hey, we don't want you like in the huddle. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm just totally guessing here. I don't know why you would tell Kirk to to kind of back away, but we I know mean, that if he's he was, not in the fire with the players, like maybe it would be a distraction. I don't know. We know that he was in the quarterback room during the week in the meetings mm-hmm. and things like that. And I saw him a handful of times during games. I saw him talking to Dobbs at one point, one of the games that Mullins was starting and Dobbs was just on the sideline. I think it might have been the game that Dobbs was the third string, yeah. he was the emergency guy. Um, but anyways, I saw something on some social media platform that basically just kind of said like, you know, a lot of people are calling for the Vikings to re-sign Kirk, draft the QB of the future, and let that new guy sit behind Kirk for a season or two. And their point was, well, shouldn't he have mentored 
the existing young quarterbacks on the roster. Yeah. Shouldn't shouldn't that have had an effect? And and who knows? Maybe maybe Kirk isn't the Brett Favre or the Aaron Rodgers that trains up the Aaron Rodgers or the Jordan Love. Well, you know. it's funny you say that because I think both Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers in the past have said something to the tune of, it's not my job to train up this guy. Mm-hmm. And both of them, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm misremembering, have said, like, I'm going to go and play and Aaron and or Jordan can figure it out like i'm not his coach like i think being the backup behind a great player just seeing and viewing by osmosis how that guy goes around doing things is extremely valuable and i don't know that it's kirk's job to sit down with nick mullins and say hey when you take this job over make sure you do this like and i don't think that's what you're saying no i yeah i'm not necessarily saying like hold his hand until Mm -hmm. he's literally you know about to go on the field for his first snap but i don't know i guess i i kind of hoped as a fan of kirk cousin i i I hoped for a little bit more that way yeah um in the wake of his injury i had hoped to see him a little more active visibly on the sidelines where we can see, because we can't see what happens yep. at the TCO Performance Center week in and week out, day to day. We don't see those things. And I'm sure he is still a vocal leader in all aspects of the team, not just in the quarterback room. Oh, I'm sure. And and I heard Brian O'Neill say... I was just about to bring that up, yeah. Brian O'Neill was just praising Kirk Cousins up and down, like, yeah, I want him back. 10,100 mm-hmm. million percent, like... He used every extent of hyperbole known to man mm-hmm. to make it known to the media, yes. And I think Brian O'Neill could probably speak for most of the team. Yes, yeah, we want him back. And Kwesi has also today, I think, in an interview said, we have every intention of bringing him back. Yeah, I watched that whole, they had like a half hour press conference, uh, Kwesi and K- excuse me, KOC together they were sitting next to each other taking questions at the same time uh and if you haven't seen that you evan or anybody listening it's a it's a good i mean it's a lot of coach speak and a lot of they don't drop any bombs saying anything we wouldn't expect to hear but it is nice to hear it from them in a in a tone of voice that doesn't sound rehearsed or planned or fake um i was going to bring that up to that that whole press conference up to later in the podcast but um, and I'll, I'll save it for them, but for you to talk about Brian O'Neill and JJ again, like recently there have been many leaders on the team that have given their vote of confidence for Kirk and yeah, maybe we haven't seen it on TV or on the sidelines. If Kirk wasn't around or wasn't a continued at the moment leader, I don't know that Brian O'Neill would have to feel like he would go out of his way to like open his heart out for Kirk Cousins into the media. I don't know that JJ puts his foot down and says, Kirk's my guy pretty much, you know, in other words. But if, if Kirk wasn't there, if he had just flown to Michigan and we hadn't seen him since the green green Bay game, like guys aren't feeling that way. He's not like uh, Marcus Mariota where yeah, got benched by the Falcons a couple <laughs> of seasons ago, and then he was just—he's no longer with the team, yeah, he, and that's all they said. He got it's a like, surgery and had a baby and moved, literally moved away. Yeah. Like I just listened to you and I talking about that I, in like episode—I <laughs> don't know—we were talking about the two quarterback or three series. or four or something. Yeah, yeah, because that's really where, like, as fans, we got to see that whole thing kind of laid mm-hmm. out for what it truly was and from kind of both sides of the equation from the Falcons as an organization and mm-hmm. Marcus Mariota, the player. And just to kind of stick along this theme, we've been going about players saying things in the public. If Kirk, and I've said it too, unless it's all an act, the whole quarterback on Netflix thing, unless it's all an act, Kirk is a like good dude. I guarantee you, there are, you know, there would be quote unquote anonymous teammates from the Vikings that would have come out and said like, dude, Kirk is not that way. He is not the guy that, you know, 
reads books to his kids at night or blah, blah, blah. Like they would say like, he is a terrible person. We haven't heard a single thing about that. If anything, people have doubled down and said, I love Kirk. He is that way. Like, so it's not an act. He is that dude. And, and even some of the new guys, like I, I've, talked a lot about Dalton Reisner because I watched a lot of his mm-hmm. locker game inter- uh, locker game locker room post game is what I was trying to there say there it is uh, interviews and you know he was signed what two games into the season or something like that like, yeah it was after the Philly game I yeah. just listened to you and I talking about that earlier too. so like the dude had no training camp no previous experience with any of these guys mm-hmm. and all he's done is talk about the culture of this team and Kirk Cousins and how good of a leader he is and ooh, this is gonna be a good pour. I can tell. Can you hear it? I, you probably I was, won't pick I was it up on the mic. You'd hear that trickle liquid sound on the microphone and nah. people would have to take bathroom breaks. <laughs> That's a better pour than your TikTok pour. There's still some in here. What you're supposed to do is once you get just like maybe half an inch on the bottom Mm -hmm. my brother-in-law david will be proud of me for this you're supposed to swirl it around oh i'm not talented enough to do that you got to swirl it around a little bit and then you pour the rest of that in there oh in the can yeah swirl it in the can can, got it and then pour it in i'll demonstrate because i'm getting close here you better in just a moment i really hope this is hilarious um but yeah i i did i remember after kurt got hurt dalton reisner he had one of those locker um interviews and he said something to the tune of like i've only known the guy for like the past five weeks and even now i can tell you this is a huge blow and he's a great leader and and that was like after the green bay game so yeah kirk is kirk is him he is that dude and it sucks that there's a chance he's not a viking after this season i think they sign him so i've got like maybe this much left in there okay hey hold on this is our listeners' chance to switch from the audio version of Spotify to either the video of Spotify or YouTube just to watch this masterful act here that is not going to go wrong in any way. It won't. <laughs> I've done this many times. I just don't do it as well as David. So, David, if you're out there, thanks for teaching me. And thanks for watching, David. Yeah. Will you just give a little swirl? Oh, I talked this up way too much. And then you just dump the rest in. Interesting. I think it's more important to do on um, wheat beers and other beers with like oh, yeah. sediment. sediment. Yeah, unfiltered IPAs and stuff. Yeah, because um, that sediment settles. And so you, you pour most of the beer and then you shake the rest of it up and dump it in. And that just churns that sediment into the rest that. of the beer. But yeah, there you go. That's how you're supposed to do it. Nice. And after that great transition, I think maybe we can start talking about the off season. Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, do you want to talk about the playoffs first? Just quickly hit on who's in the playoffs? I yeah. I feel like most people out there that listen to us probably know who's in the playoffs. But. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we can kind of quickly go through it and maybe give, like, a this team or that that team, depending on sure. who, who we think wins, maybe give, like, a two-minute playoff bracket and then our Super Bowl picks. Are we good with that, or should we hold off on Super Bowl picks for a while? Because we're going to keep recording weekly. Can I just tell you who I'm rooting for? Sure. Regardless of my pick? Yeah. Okay. I'm going with the Ravens. I, I am a Ravens supporter this offseason as well, or this playoffs as well. I Well, not even so much. I think I think they're the team to beat. I don't know they who's going to beat them. Outside of injury or fluke plays, no or one's going to beat them. Or the refs. <laughs> so, yeah, the, uh, the Ravens, they're... We'll go down AFC really quick. Ravens are the number one seed. Uh, the two seed is Buffalo, and they will host the seven seed Steelers. Uh, three seed is Kansas City, who will host the six seed Dolphins. And then we have the four seed Texans, which is kind of crazy after being so bad for the last few years. They're going to host the five seed Cleveland Browns. They found their guy, though, Houston. They Houston did. found a couple of guys. They have two high profile. They made two big hits on rookies in the second overall pick and the third overall pick. Um, CJ Stroud. And do you know the guy, the defender? I can't think of his name. The third overall pick. I know who you're talking about. I just can't remember yeah. his name off the top Brooks of Brooks something. I don't know. That's terrible. I should know this, but I know he's good. Um, but yeah, that I mean, and 
obviously their coaching is working. They have a new coach. Um, did they get a new GM or I don't, I don't remember GM, their but... coaching staff. D'Amico Ryan's is proving, you know, he, it, anytime you get handed the second and third overall pick, that's, that's a big heave. You know, that's, that's a nice boost for you. Yep. Um, but you still have to do it. Like you still have to coach and win and they won their division and they're going to host a playoff game and good for them. Yeah. Agreed. I can run down the NFC yeah. really quick. Um, 49ers are the one seed with the first round by mm-hmm. wild card weekend. We'll have the Cowboys taking on the Packers in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Mike McCarthy revenge game a little bit. <laughs> There's a couple of revenge games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the next one is, uh, Detroit hosting the Rams. And I already said who I'm rooting for in that game. Yes. Go, go Rams. Go Rams. <laughs> Uh, and then I think the worst matchup in the playoffs, both sides, AFC, NFC, I think is Tampa Bay and Philly. Interesting. Tell me, tell me why. Uh, well, Philadelphia has laid an egg. Yeah. Did, have they? What did they go like? Oh and two, oh and three. In the so last? there's a fun stat that I think I heard on the power trip on K fan, but like it's probably been bounced around everywhere. Philly, I believe, is the first team in NFL history to start with a ten and one or better. And not hit 12 wins. Really? Yeah. Well, that, that's that, a crazy stat. That's a good stat. And that just makes me feel good for yeah, I hope an Eagles, anti-Eagles fan. I, I said it on a previous episode, one of the first seven, because I've been doing a re, re-listen. I hope Eagles fans never have another good thing to root for. <laughs> well, they've, they've been bad. And... I think I said this on my little um, bra- uh, pick 'em video that I did on oh, yeah. YouTube where I kind of picked the Vikings to the number one seed back when that was still a possibility, <laughs> which is laughable now. Mathematical possibility. <laughs> yes. Um, anyways, um, I just made a very, f- what I thought was funny passing comment that somebody's got to win the NFC South because <laughs> they were... Pretty bad Mm -hmm. all the way around this year. I mean, they had the worst team in the league in the Panthers, um, as well as who else? The Saints, the Bucks, and And the the Falcons. Falcons. Yeah, And And all three of those were kind of vying for that uh, divisional title. Half of that division is searching for a new head coach right now. Yeah, that's true. So anyways, you've got the Bucks hosting Philly. I think, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. You know what? I, NFC, I'm rooting for Tampa Bay. Just Baker balling out, and obviously I think the AFC is going to be run away. The whole thing's going to be taken by Baltimore. I should probably put money on that right now. But <laughs> you know what? Why not? Tampa Bay, they won it a few years ago, but that was kind of a layup with Tom Brady. Yeah. If it's got to be anybody in the NFC, go Tampa Bay. For me, at least. All right. Well... The uh, the Super Bowl colors were red and purple, so maybe oh. maybe maybe oh, that's man. true. <laughs> maybe we do have a Bucks Ravens Super Bowl. Man, we'll see. I forgot about that. We'll see. Um, we've mentioned it briefly, but a lot of coaching vacancies already. Mm-hmm. Seven at the moment. Seven at the moment. I mean, a few of them happened during the season, like the Raiders fired Josh McDaniels. Um, who else was fired mid-season? The Stokely. Panthers. Oh, and, oh, yeah. And Stokely in yeah. L.A. Frank Reich, I think, for the Frank Panthers. Reich. He is the only coach ever, another NFL history uh, trivia thing for you guys. One season, right? Well, he's the only coach to be fired mid-season in the first season with his team two seasons in a row, back-to-back. Whew. That's rough. Yeah. So I think there's been a couple of coaches that have been fired mid-season twice in NFL history. Like at some points in their career, they've been fired mid- during the season. But he's the only one back to, to do back it years. in back-to-back years in the first year with his prospective team. Jeez. <laughs> so, Jeez. And I don't think he's that bad of a coach. I, yeah, I don't I mean, think so either. Well, I but, might be wrong on the first year thing. I don't know. We'll it, to, it doesn't matter. We'll have to check it out. Brian but will correct me on that. Anyways, um, some big bombs coming down like this evening. Just 
yeah, within the last 24 hours, Vrabel got fired yesterday yeah, in that's Tennessee. Yeah, crazy. Um, and then today, Pete Carroll. And that whole thing is, I think they did the thing where it's like, hey, Carroll's going to be an advisor. They gave him the Bruce Arians treatment mm. where it's like, yeah, he's not... He's not fired, but he's not going to be the coach. We're going to elevate him to a different role away from coaching. I so. kind of wonder if the Patriots will do something similar. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Bill Belichick also in some sort of management position with the Patriots So I think well? he, he fills the duties of the general manager. So he, he is, is he the personnel guy. Effectively, he's the head coach and the GM. So if yeah, if the Patriots were to all out give Bill Belichick his walking papers, they would need at least one person to fill the role of coaching the team and doing all of the personnel decisions that the GM would do. So interesting. I think it's been proven that the. Teams run better when there's a guy who gets the players and there's a guy who coaches the players. And yeah, those guys need to be hand in hand working together. But like you ultimately need one guy to say, I'm going to keep this guy and cut that guy. And then the coach, you know, maybe he wanted the guy that got cut, but ultimately he's going to have to coach who he has. So the Patriots, if they were to fully kick Bill Belichick out and boot him, give him his walking papers, they would need at least one guy to fulfill both roles, if not two guys. You know what movie I always think of when it comes to that? Moneyball. Moneyball. 100%. Well, when he goes in, he's like, we're not starting Smith tonight. He's like, yeah, of course we're sp- starting that guy. He's like, no, I can't. You can't. You can't. I'm telling you, you can't. Well, fine. I'm the coach. I'm going to start him if I want to. No, you can't because he plays for Tampa Bay now or whatever. <laughs> I, I totally butchered that scene, but... <laughs> You you captured the essence of the scene pretty well. <laughs> Not accurate to, in terms of details. No, I but, totally butchered it. But in terms of the essence, you got it. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, that's totally what I think of. And I agree with you. I think there has to be that system of checks and balances almost of like, yep, you're the guy on the business end of things that brings talent in. And then there's another guy mm-hmm. who makes the decisions of where do you fit in this puzzle and how do we get the most out of you on the field? Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that just, I, I, I can understand the like pie in the sky dream of, well, yeah, the guy who coaches and who puts players in his scheme and designs everything should be the guy who decides who's on the team and who gets, you know, traded for or traded away. I can see that mindset, but ultimately it just, it doesn't work. Um, in the Vikings press conference today with the general manager and the coach, somebody asked Quasey, I think it was a question about like, uh, some high profile guys like Lewis seen. And I think Andrew Booth that Quasey made big decisions and drafting pretty high, but then we're not getting playing time. And Quasey, his answer was something to the tune of like, I mean, obviously, those guys work their tails off and they're doing everything they can behind the scenes. But, like, as far as playing time, he kind of pointed it off to KOC. Like, that's up to the coaching staff and their direction. And it wasn't like a, it's not my fault they're not playing, it's the coaches. It was more like, hey, KOC has his job and his job is to play the guys and make those decisions. And my job is to bring the guys in. So comfortable to stay in his lane almost yeah. like this is my lane. That's his lane. We do what we do. And yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, all that to say there's some at the moment, what a fourth of the league almost just under a fourth of the league is looking for a new head coach. And the Vikings have at least one guy that in their coaching staff that has been a previous head coach. And we've been talking about it ever since we started this podcast in May of 23, Brian Flores, he's a head coach caliber kind of coach and he will get his chance. I just hope selfishly they keep him on the Vikings. Well, I don't remember who I was listening to, but we had a snow day earlier this week because we're in Iowa and we had that big snowstorm roll through early this week. Um, and I was listening to some sports talk show. I can't remember which one it was, um, but they were talking about these new vacancies. And I think it was yesterday, actually, 
when uh, right after Vrabel was fired. Yeah. And somebody brought up the fact that, well, maybe this is actually good for the Vikings because perhaps Vrabel's the guy to take over for Belichick I've seen in that, New yeah. England. And perhaps before Vrabel got fired, maybe Brian Flores was the guy mm -hmm. that was maybe the front runner for that position. And so now that Vrabel's kind of entered the picture, maybe there aren't many attractive options out there for Flores and maybe he's, you know, more comfortable to stay put for another season and see what develops Maybe next season. There's also a mindset too, and I think you've said it and I've heard it said around other outlets too, that the trend right now is to hire a young up and coming offensive mind for your head coaching position. And I can see that obviously it worked with McVeigh, and that's why they're doing it. Um, Shanahan's got the number one seed in the NFC right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> and then, like, who's the Cardinals coach? Gannon. I think he's a defensive mind, a defensive-focused head coach, and obviously the Cardinals are not great, so that could be proof that, like, yeah, no, go for the offensive mind and then hire a good coordinator for the defense to run that. I don't know. But maybe that means Flores stays for another year. Um, I don't know what his contract looks like. I've seen Schefter tweets and stuff that, oh, this team has requested – you know, to interview this coordinator from another team. And I haven't seen anything about Flores being requested to interview, but I don't know. Is he still under contract? I don't, I tried to look it up when he got signed last off season, Flores did. I couldn't see anywhere where it said like, Oh, Flores, the coach is being signed on a three year contract or a one year contract. I couldn't see anything about the years, hmm. which makes me kind of question like is he even technically still under contract do, do teams have to request to interview him or are the vikings competing for him the same i may be way off maybe he's still under contract i don't know um but that's yeah. an interesting question and i don't know the answer to that um i do know in the press conference today sorry i totally cut you off no you're good um i think it was koc today fielded a question about the defense and about Flores. It wasn't necessarily about like, what do you think about the idea of him leaving? But it was like, what do you think of how he did and how the defense did? And KFC said something to the tune of like, thought he did well, there were ups and downs, but I'm really excited to see what he does from here on out, which alluded to the idea that at least KFC thinks there's a possibility Flores doesn't leave and he's still the coordinator here. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be exciting to see how this all plays out. It's kind of the soap opera of the NFL and following mm -hmm. your favorite NFL team. I mean, and there are just so many aspects to it. Who are the coaches? Who are the players? Will they stay? Will they go? You will know? they stay or will they? <laughs> <laughs> no, we probably can't even say that. Um, so I texted you an idea. I think this was inspired by my snow day research that I did <laughs> when I was sitting at home and I was bored. Um, but I... I told you that I wanted to come up with three keepers mm -hmm. and three goners in free agency. And if you didn't know, the Vikings have a whole slew of free agents uh, coming up here. Mm -hmm. Let me count them really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 free agents in 24. That's easy. I should have counted that before. <laughs> there you it, go. <laughs> the, the year and the number would have been easy to remember. But anyways, 24 free agents. We, we're not going to go through all 24 of them, although I started to. <laughs> um, I want to know who you think the Vikings should keep and who you think the Vikings should get rid of. Well, I'll just go down. I'll say some of the biggest name free agents that the Vikings have. Um go for it after this season so if nothing changes nobody's re-signed anything like that as of right now these guys are the biggest ones that are gonna be lost um you got Kirk cousins his contract expires daniel hunter um let's keep going greg joseph is kind of a, a sneaky name on that brandon powell is a little sneaky jordan hicks starting middle linebacker or inside linebacker i guess um 
Dalton Reisner's Dalton down there. Dalton Reisner's huge. KJ Osborne, which could be a controversial one. DJ Wanham, who's injured. Um, so those are some of the big, big name, at least decent players that are on the block. If nothing changes, they will not be on the team next year. They're not under contract after the season. Um, so yeah, uh, you've already written down your keepers and goners. Yeah, I didn't intend for you to see this <laughs> until we recorded, well, but that's all right. Well, we have a shared drive, so we, we share a <laughs> Google Drive. Yep. That's that's fine. You want me to start? Yeah, Since, go for it. All right, I'll start with my goners. So I think my first goner is like I think any Vikings fan that's at least somewhat educated on the roster mm-hmm. would agree with me 100% on this, but Marcus Davenport has mm-hmm. got to go. He committed highway robbery. Uh, thirteen uh, as much as thirteen million dollars for yeah. a, a, a handful of games. Yeah, two sacks, I think, maybe At a most. sack or two. I don't know. And again, my theory could still stand. You know, maybe he's one of those cancerous guys in the locker room that they just shut down earlier, mm-hmm. early in the season, and they were like, "Nah, we're we're not going to deal with you. We're not going to make a big deal of it. We'll eat the thirteen mil that we." Sorry about that. Spent on you, but like, yeah, no, he's he's got to go. Yeah. Like, the get sen- him out of there. The sentiment I've heard about him is, you just can't make somebody want it. I think uh, Darren Wolfson has said like you can't force a player to want to play and want to be good. Yep, and that's that's all I need to hear. Yep. So, bye. <laughs> get out of here. Do you want to go back and forth on this? Yeah, let's want- go back and forth. All right. All right. So we're going goners right now? Yep. So I'm spitballing here. I'm just looking at names. Um, man, I don't even know who John Reed is, so that's unfair to say. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. This is this is very okay, I've got a goner. Uh Jonathan Bullard. Um hmm. I think he was a uh, a depth defensive lineman. Um cheap-ish contract uh i don't know he he didn't make a huge impact maybe a couple of you know non-stat sheet plays he made but it feels like with the right draft pick you can you can replace a guy like that pretty quickly he didn't make my keepers list but i did put a check mark next you did, to him yeah. like yeah maybe keep him for depth you mm-hmm. know he would come in every once in a while um and I think he saw more playing time once Davenport was officially out, out, and yeah. wasn't coming back. So, anyways, yeah, I I would agree with that to some extent, though. Like he was kind of a fringe player for me. Like, yeah, yeah you could take or leave him, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second goner is maybe kind of controversial because he's been with the team for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you got to let Greg Joseph go. I can see that. And I think this is the time to do it with his contract expiring. St- statistically, he is a bad kicker. Yeah. He is in the bottom half of the league in every statistical category, and I looked it up. He's 22nd in field goal percentage. Uh, no, sorry. I stand corrected. He's 30th uh, as oh, yeah. of the end of week 18. He's 30th in field goal percentage. He's 22nd in extra point okay percentage um so it's time to move on and the vikings have historically struggled with kickers i don't know what you do i don't know what the answer is but i don't think he's the answer moving i think at least you're getting his value back in any name name any incoming rookie or you know previous kicker on another team i think you're at least getting a replaceable name maybe at a lower salary unless he's like essentially free you know like if yeah that that would be the only way i would say yeah keep him but i agree with you there were there were like five or six kickers in the league this year that were 100 percent from extra points i know they moved the extra point back like what five years ago no it's probably been closer to 10 years ago at this point it's been a while maybe walsh was the kicker for the vikings when they made that change okay well i point being like at this point when you're an NFL kicker, you shouldn't have anything less than a 90% from extra point. Mm-hmm. Like, it's been assuming, that long. Assuming, you know, indoors and, you know, assuming. Yeah, you know. yeah. Like, I, I don't know. And, and I don't think he was 90%. I think Greg Joseph was like 88 or something like hmm. that. And to me, that's just, it's not acceptable. 
you, you can't win games, especially with as many close games as the Vikings seem to find themselves in. You can't win games with a kicker like that. No, you yeah. can't We've get seen out of it. A, yeah, you can't get out of a season with a winning record with a kicker like that. Mm-hmm. You, you've got to you got to do better. And I think the Vikings need to find better. I think Greg's a good guy. Um, oh, sure, yeah. And he made that incredible 61-yarder. <laughs> but yeah, I it, you don't have confidence in him. Right. Um, I say you, we, the school hop does, do not have made. And I don't think the coaching staff really showed that they had a ton of confidence in him. Either yeah. I just year. think it, he was kind of hidden this year amongst the rest of the poor team. Agreed. Um, all right. My turn. Yep. So uh, I just want to iterate that. I do agree on the let Marcus Davenport walk. He's, he's not the guy that I'm going to pick right now, but absolutely. I a hundred percent agree with. Um, I will say my next one to let walk is uh, Josh Dobbs. Mm. Magical four, four to five to six quarters that we had with him. I just think keeping him kind of muddies everything up. And that's, I mean, it's more for the other quarterbacks in the room. If you draft a quarterback high and you keep Josh Dobbs, because if you keep him, that means you've, you've signed him. You've made you've gone out of your way to make sure that he's still on the team. Um, it's not like you keep him because he's a cheap option or something. Like no, you you had to sign him. So does that hinder the confidence or development of a young guy? Um, does it kind of let everybody know that like, yeah, we've got this guy that yeah he he was a disappointment, but we could we could bench you at any second, whether it's Kirk or whoever. Because we do have this electric weapon who's proven he can come in on a second's notice and do something. So, yeah, all that to say, I let Josh Dobbs walk. And he may be ready to. Like, this season, he might just need a refresh and some other team's going to sign. He's going to be an NFL quarterback next year. Um, But, yeah, I just let him do it somewhere else. I I would agree with that. Uh, My third goner would be Cam Akers. Uh, I don't think a running back can recover from two Achilles tears on. It's tough. Both. He, he legs. is young though, but yes, that he's young very and he, valid. he's proven he can come back from one, <laughs> but he tore the other. <laughs> and when you're in a position where you've got to shift and move and plant and juke and do all that stuff that yeah. I don't even know, like because I'm not a running back, and won't I even work out and recover. Like, yeah. Uh, I loved what he brought to the offense. Uh, I thought it was a great pickup at first. And oh, absolutely. He electrified the running game when the running game was stagnant. Um, had he not been injured, he wouldn't be on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if he hadn't injured his other Achilles, he might still be a keeper in my eyes. Um, but because he injured that other Achilles, I I don't know that you can justify bringing him back. Yeah. I think the Vikings running back room at the start of the 2024 season looks significantly different than it did at the start of the 23 season. I think it needs a pretty big overhaul. Yeah. And I think the injury to Cam Akers, I agree with you, almost disqualifies him for being in that overhaul. Yeah. if nothing else, just for the fact that he's not under contract. So again, another guy that if he's on the team next year, you would have had to go out of your way. And maybe because of his injury, let's let's just say pie in the sky. Let's assume he is physically able to fully come back to 100%. I mean, with that injury, he could be a cheaper option as well. Nobody's going to sign any running back to big numbers. Cam Akers could be a cheap option, but that also means... There's going to be some names out there this offseason that the running backs tried to, you know, start a coup in the NFL and <laughs> force their way to big paydays. There's going to be some high quality guys that are not going to get big paydays and the Vikings might be able to reap the benefits of that. So, all that to say, I can see and slightly agree with your your thought on Cam Akers. If I had to tend to go one way, I wouldn't mind having him back, but that injury is tough. Yeah, that is tough. Who's your third goner? All right, my third might be a little controversial. Maybe not. Um, and it has no bearing on the kind of person he is. But I think KJ, KJ Osborne. Um, you're already 
hopefully about to drop a record breaking amount of money on the league's best wide receiver. One of the league's best players. And KJ, he's not going to be like veteran minimum. He's also not going to be JJ money, but he's going to be a, a chunk of change. He's a good number two or a number three somewhere. Yeah. And this year, he, we, I, again, I li- I've listened back on our off season episodes um, from last season. We talked about KJ and that he's going to step up. And that's even after the Vikings drafted Addison, before we knew anything about Addison, how KJ, he's going to be that number two. Um, we and wanted him to be that. I wanted him to be that so badly. Yeah, and it never and I, materialized. I think he did too. And he has always had flashes throughout his entire career when he's been the number four guy, the number five guy, the number three guy. He's always had flashes where you think he could be a number two or even a number one. He just, I mean, he's been behind Adam Thielen and JJ his whole career. Um, even BC Johnson was ahead of him for a little bit. Like mm-hmm. he never took that next step. And then this year when he had that opportunity, he probably entered the season on the depth chart as the number two guy. He still only had those flashes, you know, like he never was the number two. He never had number two receiver numbers. He wasn't the Adam Thielen, Mr. Consistent. Yeah. Every time you throw it my way, I'm going to get it. He had a couple of decent games and then a couple of games where it's like, how did you drop that? Uh, I think he's good. And I think he's, he's not done in the NFL by any means. I just, he's going to cost what a halfway decent veteran wide receiver costs. And I think the Vikings have seen enough to know that they can draft a guy or they can give a guy like Jalen Naylor um, an opportunity to step up and be the guy. So, yeah, all that to say, he's my, let's let him walk. He can find another opportunity. I think the good news for the Vikings as an organization is even if you do pay Justin Jefferson a lot, which he deserves, Mm -hmm. arguably being one of, if not the best offensive player in the league, um, even if you pay him, you have Jordan Addison playing second fiddle who's on his rookie contract still. Like, you're going to save a few dollars at wide receiver even if you do pay JJ because you're going to make up for that on the other side with Jordan Addison. Mm -hmm. And And I think Jordan Addison has proven already in one season – he is at least as good as KJ. Yes. And I would venture to say he's better. Well, there's a reason why Jordan Addison had that little spurt when JJ went down and it wasn't KJ. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we you, still had Kirk when JJ went down. You would expect, yeah, you would have expected Kirk to find KJ. Like, oh, they've known each other for several seasons. Mm-hmm. Now they've got that chemistry developed. And they've had flashes, but. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah. Anyways, I I think that's a good good pick. I will be sad to see KJ. Oh yeah, go. I like him as a player, as a Viking. He seems like a good guy. Um, I just think, and maybe he goes somewhere else. And having a different scenery, different quarterback, different scheme, maybe he does turn into a thousand yard receiver and a Pro Bowler. I don't know. Yeah. And if that happens, it's not like we can say, ah, oh, darn it. We should have kept him because obviously he's proven that's not what he's going to do in Minnesota. Moving on to the keepers. Yeah. So we've given our three goners. Let's talk about our three keepers. I'll go first. Hold on. You kind of cherry picked a little bit here. You you kind of took. What do you mean? You took the obvious guys. You're right. I can see your three keepers. I'm going to choose different guys just because that's how we should do it. Let me just be clear. I actually came into this prepared, and I feel like you're just kind of spitballing here. So, yep. Okay, you are a trillion percent right, and I'm, I I love you, but you you did you stole the the good names. Well, maybe I did, but I did some research, and I I actually have like facts to back you, these up. You do. They're not, you they're absolutely not just, do. They're not just my opinions. Yep. Well, this first one might be my opinion, but... <laughs> it's hard to beat. So, all that to say, I'm sorry, you cherry-picked, we're friends, uh, go for it. 
I'm sorry you didn't come to this conversation. Prepared. I was. I didn't even know we were going to do this segment. I texted you about this. I I do not remember. <laughs> when did you text? Was it during the game? No, I think it was during the snow day the other day. I was oh. like, hey, we'll do... With all these free agents, we should do the three keepers and the three goners. I'm not saying you didn't, because you absolutely did. And if I could pull up my phone right now, there's probably that text right there. It's on there. It's on me that I don't remember this, but I don't That's remember right. this. You can keep throwing me under the bus. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> hey, you started it. multiple Packers in our playoff I'm just consolation saying if, if fantasy you, game. If you can't take it, don't dish it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. So, okay. All right. <laughs> so my first keeper. Jerk. <laughs> is a very obvious one. But we've also dissented on this issue. There's some controversy here. There's and, there's and a large haven't... portion of Vikings fans that will argue with you. And we haven't agreed on this either. Y- to yeah, some sure, extent. Sure, okay. <clears throat> yeah. To some extent. And we could go back and listen. You haven't made it all the way to episode 20 and 21. Not yet, yet. but I'll get there. <laughs> I work from home. I think my first keeper, and I think the keeper that the Vikings go after more than anybody else... If if I were in that GM seat, uh, is Kirk Cousins, because I think he's the best option at quarterback to win this coming season. As of right now, as of right now, he's the best option. I don't know that there's any. Well, I can guarantee you that no rookie quarterback coming in from the draft is going to net you ten plus wins. I don't Instantly. think that's reality. Nope. And I don't know that there's going to be any free agents on the market that are going to immediately fit into this system and fit into the culture in this locker room and win over the locker room the way that Kirk Cousins has immediately mm-hmm. and, and lead this team to uh, a playoff berth. So I, I think it's going to cost money. We know that. Um, Kirk has said this week, even in interviews, that he's willing to take less money he's implied that he's willing to take less money slightly less money but still less money than maybe what he could get elsewhere Mm -hmm. uh, to stick with the vikings and i think the vikings milk that for whatever they can if that's a season two seasons at i don't know 35 million dollars 37 million dollars if they can get him down to a number in that range. I think they've opened themselves up to a whole new set of possibilities in the 24 season and in the future. Yeah. And so so all that to say, I I agree with you before I react in any other way. I agree with you. I want Kirk back. Maybe it's not my, I think having Kirk back is my one B, but I, I want him back. So you have some notes here, and one of your notes about Kirk Cousins and re-signing him is almost like identical to a tweet that I saw from Dustin Baker today. It's probably because I got it from nice. a tweet. Okay. Well, hey, it's a it's a good thought. So um, I, I don't have it right in front of me, Dustin Baker's tweet, but it's something he tweeted something like, "Yeah, Kirk did say he would. He kind of implied he would be open to a quote unquote hometown discount, and." Baker also goes on to say that discount probably means something like 30 to $35 million a year, not $10 million. Like, which I think is a very accurate thing. I, if the Vikings sign him and there's not this whole fanfare where there's 10 other teams that are competing neck and neck for Kirk cousins. Like if whenever that news report comes out, that the Vikings sign him, I expect it to be somewhere between, you know, 30, 35, somewhere in that range, somewhere under 40, which is, we're just throwing out just life-changing numbers. You and I could combine, <laughs> we could combine our lifetime earnings we and quadruple that. that number, and we're not talking about $40 million. <laughs> like, But what's interesting is, like, since Kirk signed his huge record-breaking, fully guaranteed contract with the Vikings in 2017, was it? I think it was after the 17 season, so... It would have been, like, in the off season, Early 2018. Sure. Yeah. Whenever that was. Um, like, that was a record-breaking contract at the time. Yeah. Well, it, And it, notable it, because it was fully guaranteed. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of chump change I think now. he's somewhere around 15th. 
yeah. right now compared to like Joe Burrow and Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes, Lamar and Jackson, Lamar. Jalen Hurts. Yeah. yeah, like those guys have just eclipsed him infinitely, almost it yeah. seems in terms of uh, contract amounts and things like that. And I, I think Kirk realizes that too. I think he's really realistic. I think what's going to need to happen is both the team and the player will have to get in a room and say, listen, this is what we need out of each other. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's going to take. And if both parties agree, let's do this. If not, let's make an amicable split right now. And let's just let bygones be bygones and let's move on. Yeah. Well, and the reality too, I think the, the true nature of this quote unquote hometown discount is the fact that they can sit down in a room and talk to each other as people that respect each other and have worked with each other for years and know each other. And Kirk's, he said like, you know, if I go somewhere else, my kids love their kindergarten class. Like I'll just have to find a good kindergarten class somewhere else. Right. So that idea too, like this isn't Nike trying to sign Michael Jordan and throw anything they can at him just to get him to agree. Like this is people that are working they're coworkers and they've had success together and they have a, a level of respect for each other. I think that alone opens up the idea of a true and fair conversation negotiation. It's not just Quasi walking in saying, all right, what's the cheapest we can get you for? It's Kirk. We love you. And Kirk saying, yeah, Vikings. I love you guys too. What's the best deal. And I think just starting off from that point, means that that is as much of a value of the quote unquote hometown discount than anything else. So I wouldn't be shocked if I'd I'd almost be a little surprised if he's not a Viking next year. All that to say, I agree with you. Keeper, number one keeper. Cherry picked, but keeper. (laughs) Well, who do you got? All right. So we disagree on this one, but I don't think we're going to come to blows. My keeper my number one keeper, if it can't be Kirk, Daniil Hunter. Hmm. He's an under 30 elite pass rusher who is another guy who enjoys Minnesota, loves this team. And I don't want to represent anybody wrong here. Kirk's a savvy guy and he's going to get his dollars. I don't want to say, oh, Daniil, just because he's been here his whole career and he likes Minnesota and he likes his coaches, that means he's going to take a lesser deal. That I don't think that's the case, but I also don't think he's a jerk that's going to demand every penny he can ever get. I think Daniil is my number one. I think he's probably going to cost around $20 million. That's what he got this year. That's probably the starting... Because he earned, I think, all or most of his incentives to bring him up to $20 million. That's the first step. Like, all right, at least $20 million. Like... <laughs> which is a lot of money for one guy that's not the quarterback. But he's a top-tier player in the league, and pass rushers are coveted. You notice that there's something wrong with the defense when they don't have an elite pass rusher. So, Yeah, I and I don't disagree um, that he is worth keeping. I think he's too expensive to keep. Um, and... You mentioned that he's under 30. I think he turns 30 this year. Yeah, he year. might turn 30 before the season or during the next season. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's plenty of good young edge rusher talent in the draft. If that's really a concern, you go after him. Um, I guess I did uh, actually on my full list of free agents before I gave up on uh, <laughs> keeping and cutting uh, everybody on the list. I I did indicate letting go of DJ Wanham and Daniil Hunter. Mm, Both. Yeah. Um, Daniil, because he's too expensive, and DJ Wanham because of the injury. I just I don't know that he'll be the same guy coming yeah. back. I mean, valid thought and valid point. I'm less concerned about that. Um, They're not in... Neither of them are in my top three. They are not like... They're on the chopping block. Get them out of here. Yeah, first guys out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Daniil, like, gosh, if we could make it work, heck yeah. Keep that guy around. Mm-hmm. He's 
like you said, he's a locker room guy. He loves the organization. The organization loves him. Mm -hmm. He's produced pretty much every season he's been on the field for us. Like, yeah, gosh, if we can work it, let's do it. Yeah. Well, and to kind of address Daniel's age too, he, sure. Let's just say he's 30. Um, that seems to be the age of complete downturning for NFL players. Um, in I'm going to reference that press conference that Kwesi and KOC had today. Somebody at one point early in the press conference talked to ask Kwesi about like, you know, Kirk's sure you've said you want Kirk back, but what do you think about the injury? And Kwesi said something to the tune of like, well, you kind of see how a guy takes care of themselves and you see like what they do so even injured or not you can kind of know like okay this guy does the right things or he you know eats 10 cheeseburgers a day and he doesn't (laughs) he sleeps an hour a day like you know if a guy is doing the right things or the wrong things a little bit later on somebody asked Kwesi about Daniil literally this same thing like he's you know a free agent if you keep him he's gonna be you know expensive and he's about to be 30 what do you think about that? And Daniel or Daniel, uh, Kwesi kind of referenced his earlier answer about Kirk and saying like, well, I said, Kirk is a guy that takes care of himself and, you know, does the right things to take care of his body and stuff. He said, I think Daniel tends to be like Kirk in that idea. Mm-hmm. He even said something like, all you have to do is walk by the guy to know that he takes care of himself. I mean, Daniel Hunter, his biceps are bigger than <laughs> like my freaking head. Like <laughs> the guy probably looks like Superman, you know, <laughs> like he's just jacked. And if you see him work out, which I'm sure they do. And you see like how he takes care of himself, which I'm sure they do. The age becomes less, less of, of, a, 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 uh, of a concern. Yeah. 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 I can see that. Yeah. All right. You're, you're, are we on number two for the keepers? You said Kirk. I said Daniil. Yep. So my number two would be Dalton Reisner. Okay. Um, for the simple fact that he allowed zero sacks this year. Pro football focus. Yeah, I did see something like, hey, said, if the Vikings don't sign him, somebody else is going to sign a guy that went almost 400 snaps and didn't allow a sack. He had an incredible season. And he's just, a, a, again, a culture guy, a locker room guy. Seems like he's it. He's a good fit. And he was vocal from the get-go. Like, yeah, I love this team. I love this culture. I love this locker room. And I don't know. I, I think you you pay a little bit to keep guys like that, to keep that culture going. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard multiple players say the Vikings have the best or one of the best cultures in the league. Now, culture doesn't mean much if you don't win. Mm-hmm. So there's that. But I think it starts with culture. Yeah. And, I mean – we're in this competitive rebuild and I've, I've got a little bit of an opinion on that. Like I think this next season is make or break for Quasi, especially, and probably Kevin O'Connell by extension. Year three tends to be a hot year for new coaches. Well, I, I think it goes for GMs. Well, too. GMs too, but GMs tend to get maybe a, little a bit couple more. of coaches before they get fired, yeah. unless it's just a toxic situation. I think KOC, which he's already been to the playoffs and but yeah year three tends to be a regardless of how the record works you kind of we need to see what we need to see but all of that to say Reisner's a guy that Kwesi brought in um after we bullied him on twitter a little bit (laughs) (laughs) yeah but uh, still took the guy to negotiate and make it happen and drop Mm -hmm. the paperwork and Mm -hmm. actually get the guy and then not only get the guy, but get him on the field. I mean, that's KOC more than Kwesi at that point. But yeah, once he found his way onto the field, he was in, he never got off. He was an incredible I, offensive lineman. Ezra Cleveland got injured, opened the door for Reisner to yep. get on the field, and he never stepped off the field. Yep. He, it they they literally traded Cleveland away. Yep, and yep. they wouldn't have done that if Reisner was garbage. So I, I think he's a guy you have to bring back. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that offensive line needs to be fortified. It, it needs strength, and he brings that for yeah, sure. I agree. 
yeah, let's keep him. I want him. All that to say is like, depending if you sign Kirk to $40 million, are you able to give Dalton three, four or $5 million a year? I don't know what he, I don't, maybe 5 million is laughable to him. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, the numbers have to work and we just get to play Madden and act like we, we, we're just marionettes here. Sure. Know, yeah. Playing with our puppets. All right. My number two, my, my number two keeper might be a little bit of a surprise. Um, but I think Johnny Mund, tight end, Ooh, has proven pick. that he's good to keep. And I think there's a, a slight wrinkle for this. Um, episode, I think, two or three, maybe two, you and I, we talked about our, like, for the 23 season, surprise cuts. And, like, who could be a, a big name that gets cut that might not be, you know, known about that – you know, it'd be a surprise if this guy got cut. I said Cam Bynum, and you famously said um, C.J. Ham. Famously, <laughs> so C.J. Ham did not get cut, but they did kind of do the thing where they like signed him back for one year and kind of gave the fanfare. But it almost felt like a farewell tour. I want C.J. Ham on the team. I do, hundred percent. However, if you do not employ a fullback. That role, when it has to appear in the backfield as a fullback, gets filled by a tight end. Preferably or, a good blocking tight end. Yeah, a Josh Oliver or you know something like that, or you know a big backup running back. So tight or fullbacks are not utilized a whole ton, even less so for the Vikings once KOC came in. So if you let CJ Ham walk. I think that makes Johnny Mund all the more important mm-hmm. as a t- as a good tight end, rotational depth. Because even if he doesn't fill that tight end role, uh, Oliver might fill that tight end role, which leaves the door open for Mund to kind of get some more sta- snaps as a tight end. So I-, I think it gives you a little bit more flexibility to have one more good tight end. And then who knows how uh, TJ is going to enter the season, having done some major damage to his knee. He might, you know, start off the first few games either on IR or the pup list or less available than otherwise we would think. So I think Johnny Munn, he's my number two. Hmm. Yeah, I I think that's a good pick. And I think um, obviously the pecking order at tight end is – TJ, Josh Oliver, Johnny Munt. Yeah. Um, Unless they draft or sign a different guy. that's This is all with an asterisk. But. Yeah. Well, Nick Muse, the only other tight end on the roster, he caught his first pass <laughs> of the season. I, I think it was the Daily Norseman on Twitter tweeted something. I think it was PFF rankings or you know some statistical ranking. And... Their tweet was something to the tune of, I present to you without, you know, further analysis, the total rankings of all tight ends in the NFL. And it was like by, you know, yards and average and stuff. (laughs) And it had names like, you know, TJ Hawkinson and, and Travis Kelsey and all the big name tight ends. And at the top of the list (laughs) was, was Nick Muse. (laughs) solely because he had one catch for i think like 34 yards so his <laughs> average was like 34 yards a catch off the so charts <laughs> by whatever metric they were they were uh measuring he was the best in the league based off of one catch like and we he retweeted you, saying like i i love it that's awesome <laughs> we love you too nick but yeah that's funny that is funny <laughs> no i i think uh I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. Johnny Munt, he'd be a great pick for depth. And like you said, and it's a possibility that I haven't even considered, but if uh, CJ Ham is gone, we're still going to need some sort of yeah. blocking presence in the backfield. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a good tight end, a good blocking tight end could bring that. Yep. So that's your number two. That's my number two. My number three, keeper in free agency. Jordan Hicks. Ooh, I thought you were going to say Phil Lodeholt. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> it's been a few years. Yeah, more than a few. <laughs> uh, Jordan Hicks, I, I think he's a defensive leader. The way that he yeah. rallied after his horrific injury, um, got surgery, and then came back came and played back. for, what, the last two or three games. Something like that, yeah. Of At the a season. decent level, too. And played well, yeah. I, I think he's a guy that proved his value mm-hmm. the entire season. Um, he played well up till his injury, and then he proved that he's willing to do whatever it takes to get back on the field, and he did. And then when he got back on the field, it wasn't all like, oh, man, good for him. He got back on the field. Yeah. Um, he uh, he played well despite any of that. Yeah. So I will say last offseason, I was surprised when the Vikings not only let um, Eric Kendricks walk, they cut him. Yeah. And on top of that, kept Jordan Hicks. I was a little surprised by that. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head. He proved, Jordan Hicks proved that he was keepable and a valuable member of the defense. Well, and then they brought in Ivan Pace as that undrafted free yeah, agent. Yeah, anytime you get a UDFA, you don't expect that guy to be a, a rookie of the year candidate or a starter in any capacity. But of he the was. Form. And he was. That just made it so much better. Yeah. It was, it was incredible, actually. All right, my last keeper. I agree with you. Jordan Hicks, I want him back. Uh, my last keeper, Brandon Powell. Knowing you're probably going to make some moves in free agency, letting guys walk like K.J. Osborne, ho- hopefully as far as like the numbers work, um, maybe drafting a guy or two, definitely getting some undrafted guys, getting back Jalen Naylor. Um, but Brandon Powell proved his worth. He had a major fumble as a punt returner against the Eagles, but it seemed like it seemed like he dropped off the last three, four, five games. But before then, every once in a while, he'd pop up and make a catch on a third down and get a first down. It's like, oh, Brandon Powell. When he had the game winner in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. From Dobbs. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think he's definitely worth keeping. Um, he's probably going to be cheap. I don't know his age, how young he is, but I I think he's worth keeping at least one more season. I think he's worth keeping purely as a returner. Yeah. And then, you know, throw him in as a receiver when needed. And he's been with KOC in uh, the Rams, and now KOC brought him to the Vikings. So there's obviously some connection there. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's worked. Yeah. No, I, I think he's a good pick, and I think he's one that I identified, too, is like, if you can keep him, yeah, do it. Oh, like, yeah. I, it, and I think his contract won't be, it'll be cat friendly. It, it won't be too much. So Well, no one's going to demand as much money as Kirk <laughs> Cousins and Daniil Hunter. And JJ. <laughs> and JJ, <laughs> yeah. But I, I think the nice thing, too, is the Vikings do have some cap space into the 2024 season, mm-hmm. and... Uh, they have even more in 2025. So if they really wanted to, I think I think Quasey could make it all work out to where some of the dead money ends up in 25. Yeah. And I don't understand how all of that works. Neither do I. There's some. I'm pretty sure there's actual like magic involved or something. <laughs> the cap um, is a myth. <laughs> but, I saw a tweet today. Somebody tweeted like. Yeah, I know uh, money is tight and the Vikings are up against the cap, but darn it, the Saints somehow enter every offseason like $100 million over the cap, and they still field a team, so YOLO, sign everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe there's something to that too. I don't know, but um, yeah. It, it'll be a super interesting offseason with 24 free agents. Yeah. Some some pretty good draft picks coming up. The Vikings are picking as of right now eleventh. Mm-hmm. I overall. expect them to move up, like get a earlier pick and not move down in the draft. Mm. But that's that's it's a, a hot topic take. for another day. It's a hot take. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that in future episodes. The yeah. the draft's not too far off. I mean no, we're a couple months away. Yeah. A couple months. So we'll definitely be talking about it. Yeah. Coming up. But we probably better put the kibosh on this one. We've been talking for yeah quite a while. This a might while. be our longest one yet. Could be, but perhaps our best one. Yeah. What'd you think of the Fire Trucker Iowa IPA? Mine is gone. Yours so. is completely gone. Mine's 
basically gone. I was just saving mine for the final school, oh, which yeah, you yeah. didn't do. No, I'm sorry. But that's okay. We can still do it, and I'll finish. Uh, but no, I liked it. Um, really good, solid, solid IPA. Would have, again, would recommend to anybody out there yeah. looking for a good IPA from Iowa. And with that name, it's like it was made for our podcast. Yeah. We can adopt it. Yeah. 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 So Fire Trucker, hit us up if... Uh, <laughs> You want us to have more of those? Yeah. Cause, oh, yeah. Because we will. Oh, absolutely. We will. <laughs> All right, man. Good conversation today. Good beer, as always. Till next time. Till next time. Skull. Hey Vikings fans, Evan here from the Skull Hop and we just wanted to say thank you again so much for listening to the Skull Hop and we also wanted to take one more opportunity to let you know that this episode of the Skull Hop has been brought to you by Big Top Ventures. If you're considering taking an all-inclusive trip to either Mexico or Jamaica, reach out to our friends at Big Top Ventures at bigtopventuresllc at gmail.com. Once again, that's Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. You can get the lowest rate possible on several all-inclusive resorts throughout the region. Big Top Ventures, step right up to your next big adventure. And thanks again for listening to the Skull Hop. Skull.